Hi there, today I am going to show you how to use your New Line interactive TVs in your classrooms. We're gonna go over some basics, so let's get started. First of all, your TV comes equipped with a few things that you may or may not have on the TV, or it could be in the box that was left in your room. Two pens that are magnetic are included, and these are magnetized to the holder. The holder itself has a strip on the back that you can put anywhere you like. If you don't feel comfortable with having them up here and want to keep them in your desk, you can do so. Also, without taking the um, mounting strip off, you can put them right behind on the sides and the magnetic will keep them there behind. You're also going to have a, a wireless, it's a white wireless dongle for the internet and you will not need to take this in and out, but if you're looking, you will see it in the back in one of the USB ports. This is going to allow you to use the browser instead of just using a direct connection to your computer. You're also going to have the smart board cleaner and a terry cloth wipe in order to keep it clean. You can use both your finger to manipulate the screen or you can use these pens as I will show you in just a bit. You also have a remote that comes with it. The remote can be used to not only turn the TV on and off and adjust the volume, but also you can change the source and you can take screenshots with it and capture and bring up the whiteboard quickly. So let's get started. First of all, your TV is already connected to your teacher computer, but you can also have a few other options. There are additional HDMI and USB ports behind here, and there's also additional ports to plug in here. You also have the option for the VGA display underneath the left-hand side here. One thing to note is you will always have two cords to plug in. One cord is an HDMI. The HDMI will control the video and the audio output, and there will be a USB cord. The USB cord will control touch. So for example, if you do use an Apple TV in your classroom, you will not be allowed to use the touch feature with the Apple TV because there is not a USB cord that would run into your Apple TV. We're now ready to turn your TV on. On the left, you'll see the power button. You're going to hit it once to power it on. And when you're ready to turn it off after use, you're going to press it twice. We're waiting for a screen to come up, which will give us a start touch menu. Notice the brightness of the screen is bright enough that you do not need to turn the lights off in your classroom in order for everyone in the classroom to see the material on it. So here we have our beginning screen and we're going, going to go ahead and press to start. The screen that we now have up is called our home screen. This is where we can go back and forth each time and adjust the source as well as go to our whiteboard. So you're going to see two panels on the left and also a mirrored one on the right. And I'm just going to explain these briefly. This button will allow you to annotate over the surface of the area. And we'll talk about that in a moment. The pen is going to allow you to open the whiteboard. You can also do that here from the home screen, but if you are displaying your computer screen and you wanna switch quickly to the whiteboard, this will always be here as a menu so you can click the second pen to get to the whiteboard. The home icon will always take you back to this screen and the back arrow will take you to the last application that you used. If you have a PC, this is for a built-in computer into the TV. There are some um, classrooms that will have this. Most of you will just be wired to your own computer. So unless you are told that you have a built-in computer into your smart board, you will not be using the PC button. The first thing that we're going to utilize is the whiteboard. So you can get to the whiteboard two ways, here on the home screen or on either taskbar with the second pen drop down. There are two whiteboards to utilize and I do want to go into the settings to show you so you can choose which one you prefer. Up at the top right, if you click the setting cog right here and you're going to go down to whiteboard. 
Mine is on the new version, which you can see has a white interface. And then also it's gonna give you some more customizable options if you're going to use your own Google Drive. If I wanna go back to the classic version, my icons change just a little bit. I have a black um, backdrop instead of the white, and I'm not able to use my Google Drive with this one. It is completely which one you prefer, and you can switch and toggle between them as much as you like. So I'm gonna check, um, keep the new version on check, and now I'm going to go into the whiteboard itself. So I'm going to click this whiteboard option. So at the get-go, if you would like to use your phone or a device to sign in to Google Drive, or you can enter your credentials here manually, it is going to connect your Google Drive to your whiteboard. Why would you wanna do this? Because any files, worksheets, photos, things that you have that are saved, you're going to be able to see them down here in a cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in now. The enter button here. If you don't have fat fingers, this will not be a problem for you. All right, then I can minimize this by touching the little guy again and it will take that away from the screen. Now I'm going to have access to my Google Drive. So let me go through some of the settings that we have. First of all, we have the pen, the highlighter, shapes, lasso, eraser, and full board erase. So I can use the pen feature as long as it's highlighted and I can use my finger to draw if I'd like. I can also go through and erase individually or I can get rid of the full screen and clear it. I can use the pen if I would rather and two people can be writing simultaneously on the board. One thing to note is you do have the availability in a class such as math, if you're having problems or work done, you can split the screen in your whiteboard. In order to do that, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom three dots, and I'm going to scroll over to the canvas, and I see split mode here. The benefit to doing this is if I'm working out a problem on this side, and I start to write over my area, it doesn't allow me to. It allows me to clear this individually and clear this individually. If I wanna go back to the original way, I can come up here and I can exit. Something else that's very helpful if you're drawing shapes I can draw more than one thing at once and connect them. I can also, if I like the way this looks, take a screenshot of it. So touching it twice allows me to go in and take a screenshot. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the board. Now, if I wanna pull something up from my Google Drive, I go down here to the folder with the cloud and I'm looking for something that I can pull up as a photo. Unfortunately, I do not have any photos in my Google Drive. So it's not going to allow me to 
pull those things up. But anything that you have, and I, I can't pull these videos up because they're grayscaled, but if I had a photo there, I could go ahead and, and put it into this right here and then right over the top of it. Um, if I'm, I'm lecturing on notes and um, maybe I've done a diagram of a Punnett square and I know that some students are going to be absent, but they would like this material, then after I'm done, oh gosh, I can't even pun it square this morning. After I'm done, I can save this. I'm going to go to the QR code down at the bottom and touch this QR code. And it's gonna ask me, how do I want to export this? Do I wanna do all the pages of my presentation? Yes, I only have one. Do I wanna save it as PNG, JPEG, or PDF? If I export it and I am signed in, it's going to ask me, do I want to save it to USB that's plugged into the side, or do I want to save it to my Google Drive? I'm going to save it to my Google Drive, and it's going to take me directly into my recents when I go and look at that on my computer. Okay. Also, if I need another slide, I can go down here and touch the plus button. Now I'm on page two of two, and I can continue my slides all throughout. And then when I'm done, I can just save a PDF of my notes, and I could even bring it up next hour and have them already up and annotate over the top of it. And I want to go back. If you want to use this beyond whiteboard and you want to use your computer as a display and still be allowed to choose things on the computer and it pops up here as well, we can do that on the right hand side of the screen. Anytime that you have any connections already into New Line, it's going to show up on the outside in white. So I do have the HDMI 1 plugged into my desktop computer. You're going to touch it once. And in doing so, it will then light up blue and give me what my desktop looks like. So once I see my desktop, I now touch the desktop screen here and it's gonna to revert to my entire new line screen. If you have something on your desktop and you would like for them to, the students to write on it or yourself to write on it, you're going to do so by using this top pen over the display. Once I click this once, you'll notice that the bar has now been brought up and I can use these tools. So if I want to highlight something, I can choose the highlighter and I can also customize this with colors, the width of the pen stroke, and also I can do customized colors as well by hitting the wheel. And I can choose my colors. And I can point things out I can annotate over it if I want, if I want to change my color so it stands out. When I'm finished, if there's something on my display that I want to save, I can always take a screenshot of it by choosing this icon again. So by hitting it again, flashes and moves it off, and it clears my screen out for me. So for some of you, you may decide that you want your TV to be mirroring what you see on your computer, or you might want it to be an extended display. If you would like to use your computer and mirror what you're seeing, I'm going to show you how to do that on your computer in settings. So you're going to go down to the Windows box in the bottom left. You're going to choose PC settings. And then you're going to choose display. And right now it will show me if I scroll down, if I have multiple displays, it's going to duplicate these settings, which means anything I am currently doing on my screen, the students will be able to see. If you want to keep this setting, keep it. If not, change it to extend these displays. And in doing that, I'm now gonna see the alternate display I have on the other window. The only downside to this 
is if I have extended the display, I cannot use the touch feature. The touch feature is used to control the screen if I have it on duplicate these displays. And I can show you that by coming over on this display, I'm able to use the touch feature to move things around. So keep that in mind. If you want to use it as an extended display, you're not able to use it with the USB touch. It has to be on mirrored if you want to use the USB touch. So there may be a time when you are on your computer and maybe you have the extended display up. So you're not going to be able to utilize the icons at the bottom, but you want to be on the internet. You can go back to your home screen. We're at that right now. And you can choose browser mode. So by hitting browser mode, it's going to give you a Google browser that you can use with an on-screen keyboard. I can turn the volume up using my remote. Another function of your smart TV is you can also use it as a timer um, and a stopwatch. So if I come up on the home screen and I just touch the time as it is, it's going to allow me to choose between setting timers that occur on a regular daily basis, um, the time itself, if I just want to keep that displayed, if I want to have a countdown of time, I can do that. And I can also use it as a stopwatch. Again, when I want to exit, I can just go right back to the home menu here and anytime I wanna use that function, I can just tap the clock. If you wanna do a little bit of a deeper dive, I'm going to show you where you can go to customize and use the TV for a few more other functions. So up at the top, you're going to notice um, these icons. This plugged in means that we have something plugged into the USB port, which is going to be our wireless dongle at this time. This gives me the availability to either shut the internet off or to choose which internet Wi-Fi I am on. The settings gear is what we're going to look at right now. So things that I can change is I can change the style of the keyboard if I like. If I touch here, it's going to show that right now it's on virtual keyboard. I can add different keyboards and modify those if I need to. I can change the date and time here. Um, the TVs originally came with military time on them. If you would like to go back to the 24 hour format, you are welcome to do that. The whiteboard, earlier we were talking about changing it from the classic to the new version. Remember on the new version is the version that you can um, link your Google um, Drive to that. Another thing that you can do is you can change the toolbar. So I wanted to show you this because if you only stand on one side of your room, maybe your desk is closer on the other, or you don't want the toolbars on both sides, right now both of my toolbars are on here, but if I no longer want this right toolbar to be on, I will just go ahead and switch that off. So it's up to you. You can also space out and move the keys down. If you don't always want to be reaching up and you want it down toward the bottom, you can do that just by holding on to the two dash lines and moving it accordingly. For the power option, if you would like your TV to power on every morning because you know first thing you're going to use it, you can go to this power function and we can auto power it on. So you're just basically setting a timer for your TV to turn on. So right now I have it set here, but let's say on 
Monday through Friday. I want it to power on at 8 a.m. every day. Now it's at 8, or maybe I want it at 8.05 a.m. And now it has a schedule. You can also auto power it off, or you can determine the time after a certain number of minutes that you would like the TV to power down if you're not using it. There is a blue light filter on here that you can adjust the level. Oops. Here we go. So if it's too bright or you're looking at something and you feel like you want to dim that down just a little bit, you can work with your blue light filter. It's a little bit of the customization of it. Also, your display and theme. Right now, I am on the classic theme, which keeps it in a grayscale color. If you want to do a more colorful theme, you can change it and it changes your icons. You can't change the color, but just toggle between these two formats. Also, if you would like to put wallpaper on your device, you can do that by adding here and it's going to find any of the screenshot, screenshots that you have saved, or you can have a photo saved on a USB drive, put that USB drive in here and you can connect from there. And this is how you would choose where you find your. So I now have a different background. There's my preview. If I like it, I can go ahead and hit apply and I'll now have a new background to my new line TV. My timer worked quite well. One last thing I'd like to show you is how versatile the pens can be in order to save from dropping down and choosing between two functions on the whiteboard. So I'm going to go into the whiteboard feature and I'm going to start off by just writing oh I realize I made a mistake what I can do is with the back side of my pen I can go ahead and touch the eraser button with the back side of my pen and then go ahead and erase switch back over to my pencil side Oh my goodness, I did it again. And rather than go back down, it's going to remember the last thing. Oops. It's going to remember the last thing that I touched. So I don't have to go down and press that anymore. I can just use the back side of my pen again and it remembers. So if I want the back side now of my pen, the eraser part to be the highlighter, I can highlight things, switch my pen to go back to continue writing and then switch the back of the pen again to use my two features. So whichever icon you touch with the top of your pen is what it will do. Whichever icon you touch with the bottom of your pen is what it will continue to remember to do. So it makes it a little bit easier if you go back and forth between erasing or highlighting.